طيب نيكست شابتر شابتر نمبر 35 باب من الايمان بالله الصبر على اقدار الله A part of iman in Allah is the forbearance with what Allah has decreed to have sabr on the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the things that Allah decreed as we see again each one needs lectures but we need to go through the matter like that in brief so that we get all these meanings together so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best when the life would end and then after that a person would take the matter step by step but it's something or a book that has to be constantly reviewed and constantly studied so part of al-iman is to have sabr on the qadr of Allah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَمَنْ يُؤْمِنْ بِاللَّهِ يَهْدِي قَلْبَهِ وَاللَّهُ بِكُلِّ شَيْنَ عَلِيمٌ and whosoever believes in Allah he guides his heart uh, and Allah is the all knower of everything make the tranquility and the guidance of one's heart as a result of the belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Al-Qama, the student of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud he said in explanation of this verse he said هو الرجل تصيبه المصيبة فيعلم أنها من عند الله فيرضى ويسلم he said that he meaning the person referred to this verse is the man who when struck by an affliction knows that it is from Allah accepts it and submits to him he's pleased with the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? Because he already believes that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most wise. Nothing happened without the wisdom of Allah. He's the most merciful subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anything that happens, the reason for it it happened is that you're supposed to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accordingly. So if it's something good, you're grateful to Allah. If it's something that you don't like, you're patient and you're pleased with the qadr of Allah and both are good for the believers because what really matters is the everlasting life person living a life of misery physically it doesn't make a difference because it's going to end one day it's not going to be like that forever it has to end with one's death or the calamity goes away right but what really matters of the calamities is what stay forever which is the hellfire Billah. so the believers when they believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with his names and attributes they're always content it doesn't mean that they don't have any feelings of sadness or so no that is there the Prophet was sad when his son died, Ibrahim. And he said والسلام, that the heart feels the grief and the tongue only speaks what is good. And the eyes even have uh, tears, but we only speak what is good. The person is content by the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it shows the virtues of a sabr. Sabr by itself, such a virtuous ibadah mentioned more than 90 times in the Quran. Without sabr, there is no iman. Without sabr, you won't be sitting listening to the verses of the Quran and the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. Without it, we won't be able to make salah. Without it, we don't spend for the cause of Allah. We have to have sabr. Once you know what is truth, is that you need to seek help in two things, the sabr and the salah, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered us. And the sabr is the reason for the guidance of the heart. If we want to be guided, this is the mean to it. That whoever believes in Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will guide his heart. And as we heard in the explanation, Affliction, a person is content with the qadr of Allah, his heart is guided, and it's a thawab. This is the reward of someone to have the sabr, is for him to be guided. Uh, the hadith in Sahih Muslim and Abi Hurairah radiallahu an, that Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, If natani fin nas, huma bihim kufr, atta'nu fin nasab wa niyahatu al mayyid, two matters among people among, amount to disbelief, attacking or defaming one's lineage and bewailing the deceased. Right, so uh, this is, these are actions that negate sabr. Sabr is an act of worship that perfects the tawheed. What does this to do? We think it sounds like to some that this is something to be put in a book of purification of the soul, right? Something of mannerism. This is tawheed. This is la ilaha illallah, right? This is the principles of our deen, the foundation of our deen. Because if you don't have sabr, your tawheed is deficient, right? Everything is tawheed. Everything in our religion has to be referred to La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. As simple and clear as this. Sabr is the order of Allah for us to have. That means we do it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. This is La ilaha illallah. Right? And we follow the way the Prophet sallam in our sabr and this is Muhammad Rasulullah. So two things when people do, it's an act of kufr because it negates the sabr. When people attack or defaming one's lineage, the one for sabr is an niyah al-mayt to bewailing the deceased. This is what negates the sabr. 
Why? Because that person is not content with the qadr of Allah. You know, by bewailing and screaming and, you know, tearing one's clothing and things of that nature, this is not the attitude of someone that believes in the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, so uh, it is kufr, right? And it shows that not everything that is kufr would take the person outside the fold of Islam. It is one of the parts of kufr, right? The action itself is kufr. If a person denies the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala completely, that's a major kufr, right? But sometimes a person, if they're bewailing like this, it's a major sin. But they believe in the qadr of Allah, but it shows that they don't have the proper patience and so on. So this is a type of kufr. That does not take the person outside the fold of Islam. Narrated by Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu that the Prophet sallallahu said, "Laysa minna man darab al khudud wa shakka al jub wa da'a bi da'wa al jahili." He who slaps the cheeks, uh, tears, tears and uh, the clothes, and calls to or follows the ways and traditions of the days of ignorance is not from us. Put by Bukhari Muslim. Times of grief and sadness. What do people do? Either they follow the ways of Jahiliyyah, like that, or they follow the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have sabr, to speak only what is right, not to be extremes in these things. If a person is overtaken and tears comes down, there's nothing wrong. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not punish a person as a result of the tears that comes from his eyes. It overtakes the person. But nobody can say that he was overpowered to scream and to hit himself. And There's no such a thing. He chose to do these things. And that's why it's a sin. It's a major sin. Uh, and this is, of course, negates or against the sabr that we were ordered. Tasakhut, to be complaining, to, to protest the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that negates the iman, of course. And to be away from the ways of jahiliyyah, not to imitate the peoples of jahiliyyah because this is their way. In this case and in all cases, to follow the way of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. Anas radiallahu anhu. That the Prophet said, إِذَا أَرَادَ اللَّهُ بِعَبْدِهِ الْخَيْرِ عَجَّلَ لَهُ الْعُقُوبَ فِي الدُّنْيَا وَإِذَا أَرَادَ اللَّهُ بِعَبْدِهِ الشَّرِّ أَمْسَكَ عَنْهُ بِذَنْبِهِ حَتَّى يُوَافِ بِهِ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامِ Whenever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wills good for his slave, he hastens to punish him in this life. And when he wills evil for his slave, he withholds punishing him for his sins until he comes before him on the day of judgment. Uh, and this hadith uh, reported by Imam Tirmidhi and uh, Ibn Majah and others. So this hadith, uh, if punishment here means afflictions, right? We know that the most people get afflicted are the messengers. So uh, this is where the expiation of the sins are. And it's better for the person to have it here than to have it in the hereafter. Because the hereafter, nothing is in comparison with it when it comes to the punishment of Allah. But also the Muslim, he definitely always ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive him and not to punish him in his life and in the hereafter. Because if a believer asks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to punish him in his life and not the hereafter, this is against what the Prophet said when he visited someone that was very sick. And he realized والسلام, that this man had asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if he would punish him, then punish him in this life. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi said, you'll not be able to bear it. Seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's uh, security from him, al -afiyah. That you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be safe from all harm in this life and in hereafter. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most merciful. Nothing is difficult. So you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for everything. But if an affliction happens to you, if something bad happens to us, the person has to Turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone and to have the good expectations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The question always comes in, is this is a punishment or for the person's level to be elevated, right? But we're talking about ourselves, right? Ourselves, we are full of sins. So when a calamity happens, what is eleva elevating what? Well, we have sins, right? So it's definitely we have to refer it to our sins, right? Not that we're elevated. This is praising oneself. That it's not there. We have sins that we have to immediately repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not to sit and busy. I didn't do anything wrong. I've been okay. Okay in what? We, we are falling into the sins every day and every night and so on. So we need to immediately repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when something happens. At all times we repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if a person is sincerely repented to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that means all the sins are forgiven. So that means it's elevating him, right? So instead of being busy whether this or that, 
the person should definitely repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to seek the forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So a sign of the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when a person is afflicted with some form of hardship and he turns to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone and makes him good, this is a sign that Allah loves him. Because he was guided by this to be obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it shows the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have to witness this wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in all of the actions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the reward is given him the same sort of deed that a person do, that we have to have patience. And you might uh, dislike something, but it's good for you. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَعَسَىٰ أَن تَكْرَهُ شَيْئًا وَهُوَ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ وَعَسَىٰ أَن تَكْرَهُ شَيْئًا وَهُوَ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ وَعَسَىٰ أَن تُحِبُّ شَيْئًا وَهُوَ شَرٌ لَكُمْ وَاللَّهُ يَعْلَمُ وَأَنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ Imam al-Sa'di rahimahullah in explaining this verse, he said, in matters of the hereafter, we know what is good for us. Definitely. And that is Jannah and to be away from the hellfire. Nobody would say, well, I'm not sure if hellfire is, is good for me or not. Definitely this is wrong. But we all know that Jannah is good for the person. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for Jannah. In matters of dunya, we do not know what is good and what is bad. And this is where you put your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So as a result of that, Anything happens to you, you take the means and everything. Anything that happens, already happened to oneself, the believers immediately, they realize that this is better for them. Why? Because they would repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It would help them. They see the wisdom of Allah that this is to establish an act of worship. So they would worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and so on. So as a result of that, it's good for them. And as a result of having this uh, contentment in the heart that it's better for them because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only choose for the believers what is best for them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala choose for the believers what is best for them so they would always be pleased with the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sins of course and things like that makes the heart not realizing these things and not seeing it and not witnessing the wisdom of Allah. The next hadith, the last hadith in the chapter, also reported by Imam Tirmidhi, إِنَّ عِظَمْ الْجَزَاءِ مَا عِظَمِ الْبَلَاءِ وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ تَعَالَىٰ إِذَا أَحَبَّ قَوْمًا إِبْتَلَاهُمْ فَمَنْ رَضِيَ فَلَهُ الرِّضَىٰ وَمَنْ سَخِطَ فَلَهُ السَّخَطِ The meaning of which, the greatness of the reward is tied to the greatness of the trial. The greatness of the reward is tied to the greatness of the trial. Meaning, the more the trial is, the more the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. When Allah loves the people, He puts them to the trial. Whoever is acceptant of it will have Allah's acceptance, and whoever is displeased and unacceptant with it will gain Allah's displeasure. Right? So we see that the reward is given from the same sort of deed that a person do. If the deed is in such a way, the reward will be accordingly. And when the trial is more, that means the reward is far more and this is something clearly we see in the rewards from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and with regarding to the good deeds or the bad deeds. And if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loved people, He would test them. Why is that? The believers, they need to witness the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. al ittila or the test, purifies the person. Makes his heart attached to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. And this is the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When a person is away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his heart is depending on other than Allah. Then he's afflicted with an affliction. He sees that the human beings would never benefit him, that they would never cause any good to him. So he turns to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone, in which before he wasn't. So as a result of that, this is good for him. This is the everlasting happiness for him when he completes his tawheed as a result of turning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. And that means Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala love him. Whoever is pleased with the qadr of Allah, he gets the pleasure of Allah. And whoever is not, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is displeased with him. So it shows that how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most merciful and that part of our iman, part of completing our tawheed is to have the patience with the qadr, with the destiny of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to have always the good expectations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that you might dislike something that is better for you, you might like something that is evil for you. Only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows and we do not know. We have no idea except by what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala show us in his revelation, so we have to be patient with the qadr of Allah. Patience does not come when the person waits or when the person is, is not aware of it. When he's forgetful and then a calamity hits, he is not able to be patient. Patience is something that you have, we have to uh, prepare ourselves for it. Why the iman and the good deeds? And that's why sabr and the sadmat al-ula as the Prophet said, 
Patience is in the first instant. When the first hit comes, it is not that the person would complain then and would panic then and then after a day or after a few hours he would say, I need to be patient, so we start being patient. This is now patience. Is. Patience is once the calamity hits, a person is immediately in the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and sees the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So these are great qualities that a Muslim should observe and witness uh, and uh, complete his iman. So this is tawheed because it completes one's tawheed and perfects one's tawheed and not to have the deficiency.